Yeah, I started building surfboards in Hawaii. I kind of needed a board right away. I was moving to the North Shore and I was seeing these hollow waves at Pipe. So I figured, hey, I'd just try it out. I picked up this blank and borrowed some tools from a friend in um, Hawaii Kai. Just kind of whittled, whittled this thing out. Rode that board in all kinds of different surf. People just, I started making more after that and people started riding them. I let people borrow them and they kind of turned into this snowball effect. What you think? As, I guess as my ability progressed with it, kind of my love for doing it did. It was became more and more rewarding from the experiences of other people riding the boards or just from my experiences going through the process. At some point in there, you know, maybe it was around 100 boards or 200 boards. Yeah, it just became clear to me that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Shut up. They call it the Board Builders Guild here. People are welcome to come in and go as they please. It's a quality first spot, which is good. You know, that's why I'm here. So yeah, there's they've been building boards here since 1969. There's a lot of history. The walls are pretty worn. It's kind of built up this character that I don't know. It kind of helps with the whole vibe of the place, I guess. So this is where they, they do all the color work. It's kind of the wet room, strongest smelling room. We got our sandy here cranking away, getting dirty and dusty. A couple short boards, a little round tail for our buddy Dom. This is one for my buddy Eric in Hawaii. He lives in a little grand unit on my property. If I'm working in my studio, he comes and hangs out. Or we, we just work on different creative processes together and occasionally like I'll draw on different boards. I think today maybe I'm drawing on a board for John John's mom. I'm gonna try and get a haircut. It's fun working with Travis because his mind's really like open to like the possibilities. I find like working with a lot of different shapers, they kind of have like their thing that they're into. And if you kind of like get a little bit out of their comfort zone, they kind of freak out. He knows what a certain surfboard will do and he'll push the limit a little bit there and push it there and push it there and make boards that I call in the ride anything movement, you know, just keep going a little farther outside of what is normal in the surfboard market. Learning from the past but putting into the modern, you know, what we've learned on hydrodynamics. And I think that's really healthy for surfing. Guys like Travis, guys like Ryan Birch who are pushing the envelope and going outside and they're shaping. I met him when he was 15, and I remember him coming in, you know, and I'd shape his boards, and him and John would come and watch and stuff, you know, so that's one of the things when you're a young kid, just getting into a shop and being able to, you know, kind of rub shoulders with people in the industry and stuff, and if you're, that's what you're looking to do, that's the way to start, you know. But Travis, you know, he was always just really observant, and, and I think he began to look at around and just pick up from all kinds of people. When somebody comes to you and says, hey, make me a board, and we always talk about, you know, where are you going to ride this board? And you just begin to develop things, and from board to board you might change certain things. And I think that probably helped him a lot in seeing, you know, the whole process of building a board and how things work and talking about it. But, like, Travis is a really good surfer, so he knows, you know, what he's making and why he's making it, not just from somebody else's opinion, but from experience. The art that he does, he's been doing for a long time, and uh, we talk about it, you know, like he'll ask my advice on different things, but he's kind of, you know, he's on his own trajectory and doing his own thing. Artwork came first for me. Both of my parents are artists. I've just been, been surrounded by it since I was a little kid. I do all sorts of different styles of artwork. I, I, like, I just like building things. You know, I paint and draw and take photos and all that kind of stuff. But uh, more recently, and for the show at Sawyer, I. Uh, incorporated a lot of resin work that I do with the surfboards. I, d I just wanted to show the correlation between the two. Yeah, surfboards are a temporary medium for sure. They're just, just another canvas for me, you know? It's like, I can't help it. You know, I have to do the artwork, you know? 
it, it makes my day more fun for me to come here and do that and rewarding and you know to make these unique boards and I think people appreciate it. I'm not here. I'm a drunk. For me it's more important to be a board builder than just a shaper and to uh, have a big brand and you know have all these minions working under me and stuff. It's, it's more about the the process for me building the board each step getting my hands dirty making mistakes fixing the mistakes. I think it's a dying breed and uh, if us younger guys don't keep it going, nobody else will. And shut up.